Good morning, guys. Hi there. I'm Lori Winslow, and I'm with Rain or Shine Chalk Design. Uh, I am an independent designer with Chalk Couture, and this morning we have an old antique window um, to do some chalking on. This is a project that um, I keep thinking about and keep kind of pushing off because it's a, it's going to be a little challenging, um, but I'm excited to get it done today. Um, I've got some fun transfers to put on my window, and uh, let's get started. Good morning, Lisa. This project's right up your alley. I've got an antique window that I've had for a little while. I'll tell you the story about how I got it. It's kind of funny. Um, and yeah, so we'll get started. So I'll show you the transfers we're going to use today. Um, we're going with kind of a country theme. Uh, I want to hang this in my hallway. Um, my husband and I share this little office uh, space and I want to hang it right outside the office space. Um, my husband grew up in a farm community and I grew up in a farming community. Um, so we both have fond memories of farming for different reasons. Um, when he was in high school he went to live with an aunt and uncle and they had a farm and he basically um, worked on the farm for his keep. Um, so he has fond memories of hard work on the farm and um, <clears throat> both of my maternal grandparents were, uh, well my maternal grandparents were, uh, were farmers, uh, my grandpa was a farmer, lived on a farm. Um, so when we would visit, my sister and I would visit uh, the farm in the summertime, we got the experiences of being on the farm and I have really fond memories of those times. So um, it's a good one for me too. Um, so let's jump in. So I have this uh, truck transfer, which is I know everybody's favorite transfer. I went ahead and put the first layer on. Um, I have kind of an orange. Uh, my husband has a 78 Chevy that he just loves, his pride and joy. Um, he was the first owner of it. so. Uh, it's and he keeps it in great shape so um, I'm gonna we're gonna add this piece um, and it's a tribute to his truck <clears throat> so we're gonna make it in his colors which is kind of a burnt orange I'm having to mix colors it's not gonna be the exact color it's gonna be the idea <laughs> of that color um, we're gonna add a barn so we have a barn with the lean-to, it's a, it's a layered transfer, so we'll do that one. And I think I'm going to go with a white barn and um, gray accent colors. <clears throat> we have a windmill, and windmills are uh, special to me. I, our family growing up um, would play a game called we called Zip whenever we'd be driving, usually to my grandparents'. Um, we would look for windmills along the way. I grew up in Oklahoma, lots of windmills, and the first person to see the windmill would say zip, and then you'd count your points. So my sister, I know, remembers doing that as we would drive to see our grandparents. And um, so I'm going to put that on. Um, <laughs> yep, zip. Um, have no idea where that game came from. My parents uh, taught it to us, and we always played it. Um, windmills are also something that remind me of my mother. She um, really loved windmills. All right, so I have this huge window and I want to put um, the barn and the windmill and the truck kind of in the center. And I'm using a, a piece of wax paper to kind of keep my, um, keep my design in the middle. Um, I want to, on the back, use our buffalo plaid. So I'm going to put the buffalo plaid on the back of the window so that we get a border um, surrounding the picture and I'm trying to decide if I want to do a black. You guys can give me some input. So my hallway is painted in a kind of a cream um, color. So. I'm trying to decide if I want the black on the buffalo plaid on the window because you're going to see the background. The cream's going to come through, so it'll be kind of a cream and black. Um, but I'm open to suggestions, so if you have a suggestion of a color, 
um, that I could do the buffalo plaid in. Um, let me know what you think. Um, I think I want a darker color. I originally thought I would do white. Um, good morning, Sally. Thanks for joining us. Um, so the buffalo plaid on the back, um, I need some input. If uh, the wall's going to be cream. Um, so I've got different colors. So you're going to see the buffalo plaid um, in the background. So it's going to be a two-tone. So it's going to be cream and another color. So be thinking about that. And if you have an idea for a color for the buffalo plaid, um, just let me know. Type it in the comments and we'll take a look at, at, at it. <clears throat> so I'm going to work on the barn. It's a two, uh, two transfers and if you can see there's a little one and a little two that lets you know which one comes first. Usually the open screen is first, but not on this transfer. On this transfer, this one is first. And I'm transferring on to glass, so I need to be very careful. This is a new transfer. I haven't used this bar on anything else. Um, so I want to make sure I fuzz really well. Ooh, mustard. Lisa, that's a great idea. That would go great with the rest of the house, too. All right, I'll have to see what I've got. I have that bumblebee. Hmm. Mustard look good with that orange truck, that burnt orange truck, too. My bumblebee is almost mustardy. Hmm. Okay, now tell me what colors to put together to make mustard, Lisa. <laughs> What do I put with the bumblebee? It's a really bright yellow, like this. Um, should I add a little black? I'll have to do a little. I'll have to do a little um, color experimenting. Look that up for me, would you? How do I make mustard? What colors do I put together? Okay, so I'm using this. Um, like I said, this wax paper to kind of help me keep everything in line. I want to, I will use this on the back um, to keep my buffalo plaid uh, in line. So I'm going to, I want my barn to be up here a little bit. that to the side. Now I've got to take a look. I've got my mat underneath and I'm hoping I might be, able, might be able to line up a little bit, make sure that I'm somewhat straight. It's a big old uh, window. I was looking for an antique window for doing something like this. Um, and during the time when we couldn't get into the stores very well, um, I went to Joanne Fabric because I wanted some craft stuff to stay busy. And there was this huge line. I didn't even know that was a thing. Good morning, Carla. I didn't even know that was a thing at the craft stores at the time, that you had to wait in this big old line outside the store. But I really wanted what it was. I don't even remember now what it was. But I really wanted whatever it was. And so I um, so I waited in the line. And I waited and I waited. I think I waited like an hour and a half, guys, to get into this store. It was crazy. Um, definitely crazier than I thought it was going to be. Um... I'm going to use this shimmer frost. So we have these new shimmer colors and they're just a little bit sparkly. I think it'd be nice. And my white is really dry. So I originally thought I would use the shimmer, but then I forgot for a second. But when I saw that it was dry, I was like, oh yeah. So I want to use the, do a white barn. Um, that's what my husband remembered. Um, the barn being colored that he uh, spent his time at. 
So the barn is kind of a tribute for my husband and for myself. Um, we both grew up in farming communities. Um, my parents didn't farm, but my grandparents did. So I have fond memories of um, a farm life. My, my mother said she would not marry a farmer after growing up on a farm. She had four brothers and um, her complaint was that she got hand-me-downs from boys and you know nothing was ever new. She grew up, um, she was born in 39 so um, it was not exactly an easy time. Um, farmers had it better than some though because they they did have a food source. Grandma always had a big garden and but there was always work to be done for sure um, and it was kind of funny because my my dad's dad um, would fish for their supper so um, growing up my parents would say that we weren't going to eat chicken and we weren't going to eat fish because they had both grown up on those foods and they were tired of those foods so we ate a lot of red meat not great for health but that is what we did growing up in Oklahoma in the 70s and 80s 60s 70s and 80s okay now I'm gonna pull this off now it is sticking really really well as you can see sticks really hard to glass so I'm just trying to pull straight off and hopefully you guys can see that all right maybe a little brown all right Lisa I will give it a try thank you for looking that up it's kind of what I was thinking too that's what I did to the orange to get kind of this burnt orange I added a little brown all right so hopefully you guys oh, I don't have you guys where you can really see do I let me lower you down if you guys can't see feel free to say hey we can't see that'll help me out and help you out okay so we have our barn and a little shed little lean-to so I'm gonna go ahead and let's do the second layer of our truck So anyway, I was telling you the story about how I got this uh, window. So I'm at Joanne's standing in line, um, wanting to get some craft stuff. And um, there's a guy sitting in a car and he gets out and he has these, he has two of these windows. I have the other one in the garage. Um, so he has two of these windows and he's just sitting there. Um, looks like he's waiting for someone. So I get to thinking, well, maybe he's meeting someone, you know, and he's gonna sell him that window. Those windows, that was my, what my mind thought of right away. And um, sure enough, so I'm, I'm standing out there in line, like I said, uh, literally for almost hours um, waiting and pretty soon uh, the guy says guy says anybody in line want to buy these windows and everybody's heads kind of swivel and we're kind of checking that out he's like I was supposed to meet somebody here um, and they they're not showing up so I'm gonna leave um, but does anybody else, does anybody else want these? And somebody goes, how much? So he tells them the price and they're like, oh no, I don't want to pay that much for old windows. Well, I said, I'll, I'll buy them. <laughs> so I made a deal in the parking lot and got him in my car. Somebody was actually nice enough to hold my spot in line so I didn't have to lose my spot. And uh, 
I ended up with some fun windows. So that's my story about how I acquired these windows and the guy said they're from Enumclaw. Um, they were tearing down a house, an old, old house. Um, I don't know Enumclaw well enough. I didn't even ask him where um, or whose it was or anything. All right, so we've got our truck um, ready to go. The truck is, the transfer is older. But look at that, even though it's a really old transfer and I've used it a lot, um, it's still pretty tough to get off. So I used two oranges. I modified them a little bit from each other, but for the most part it's orange. Um, I may go back and do the wheels in black. I wasn't sure how that was going to look. Um, but his truck is definitely... Um, a 70s orangey orangish yellow not exactly the color actually the second color is closer um, the color that's on top is a little closer to the actual color but like I said it's a representative it's not supposed to be the exact color all right so we've got our truck done let's see if our our chalk isn't quite dry there. Let's go ahead and do layer one of the um, windmill. So again, it says lay, uh, transfer one and transfer two, one and two. So I know which one to lay down first. So I'm gonna put some silver up here, brown at the bottom. Make sure I fuzz my transfer. I haven't used the windmill either, but I've been thinking about several different things I could do with the windmill um, because it is a special symbol to me. I have a land, couple of lanterns. Um, I've got some etching cream. I don't know if you guys saw my video yesterday. Um, I've got some etching cream on the way. Um, so I want to try that etching cream. Um, you can definitely do that on glass and I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen other people do it and it's pretty awesome. So I have my shimmer silver. Um, I want to try that making kind of a classy farm here with everything shimmering a little bit. Again, these are my new pastes, new color scheme. Um, there are new colors introduced um, with just about every catalog new catalog so the new product launches usually have new colors um, which is nice to have some variations of colors so I'm just gonna go around to that those are the metal pieces that hold the windmill together and then probably use my small tool to get in some of those nooks and crannies with the windmill. So what are you guys up to today? It's Saturday. Anybody have plans today? Something you're going to get get done or get to do? I need to uh, 
I need to make a run, give away some more zucchini and summer squash. We just have built up another collection. Our family is uh, out and about. The, our kids that usually take some of this produce off our hands, they're out and about, so they're not around to get some of that produce. Okay, that may be a little hard to see, and the window's too big for me to lift up, so I will pull you guys in just a little bit closer. Maybe you can see a little bit better. All right. So the second layer, we'll add those. Uh, again, we'll add some silver, and we'll add a little more brown. It's got some boards that are holding it together and the little platform. All right, let's see if our paste has dried. Um, the paste dries slower on glass because it's a slick surface. It's still not dry, so I'm gonna grab my dryer, guys, and hit it with a little heat. Okay, that feels like it's dry. Um, so now the glass is actually a little warm too, so I'm gonna let that cool off just a little bit. I don't wanna put my transfer down on that warm surface because it's more likely to stick. Um, just another thing you wanna think about when you're using the transfers. But now it's nice and dry. I'm not gonna have any if you had a little piece that was like um, of chalk that came on the glass, you'd easily be able to just scrub it off. Um, just kind of chip it off with your finger or a little bit of a sharp edge. Because again, remember this chalk can come right off of this glass. It's not permanent. Um, it's permanent enough that I can leave it in my hallway. It's never gonna get ruined. Even if, um, even if somebody sprayed water on it, if you didn't rub it, it would dry. The water would just dry on the chalk and it wouldn't hurt it. Yes, my blow dryer does have a cool setting. Yeah, that might be a good idea. I could just cool it down that way, huh, Lisa? Good thinking. Good thinking. So big sisters are four, right? They are always thinking, helping you out. Yeah, it looks like my truck is dry too. I don't have to worry about smudging that. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, be happy to answer any questions you might have about Chalk Couture, um, about how the products work. Um, I've been doing this long enough that I feel like I know, I know quite a bit, but if I don't know, I can definitely um, get some information and uh, get back to you about it. I don't know if you noticed when I chalked at the very last, there are little registration marks and I put them up here at the top. Um, sometimes I can't use the registration marks if I'm doing a t-shirt, I don't want that on there. Uh, but for this, it'll be nice to have it help me line up the second transfer. Um, 
I didn't do it on the, now that I think about it, I didn't do it on the windmill, um, but hopefully I can line it up, no problem. What are you laughing about, Lisa? You're here to help me out. It might have been different when we were younger. I wouldn't have been help very helpful either. I remember. I remember how I was. Now the nice thing is you can kind of see you can see through the transfer. So I can kind of see um where that should line up. So I will probably eyeball it and see if it looks like I've lined it up. Woo! That's all over the place, guys. That's tough. And the registrations are pretty small, I'll be honest. Let's see. See if I can find the registration mark. That looks like it. That is a tiny registration mark, guys. I don't know if I have the vision for that. <laughs> but I can see it's good to have because I think I was a little off when I was looking at where I thought it went. Where is it? I feel like I'm playing peekaboo with a little baby. Like, where is that mark? Am I even close to that registration mark? Oof. Nope, not really. I'm too low. All right, so this is always the trickiest part of the whole project. Um, is really lining it up, everything up. If you have a two layer, um, even if you have just one layer, if you want to put it in an exact spot, it does take a little bit of um, practice to get that. And as you can see, I don't have much practice at this skill. Okay, that one looks like it's right on. Now if I can just find the registration marks for this one. I'm looking forward to this week coming up. I've got, um, our family was supposed to be going on a little vacation, um, but with all the stuff going on, um, we've decided to not um, be out and about in an area we're afraid is has a lot of travel going to and from. So, we are, I'm just going to take Joe over for one day. We're going to go over to the lake and uh, enjoy that for the day instead of going over and staying for multiple days. Trying to be responsible. Uh, my husband and myself, we don't really need to be exposing ourselves. Um, so, anyway, but I'm so excited to get to see some family, spend a little time with them, and uh, enjoy that. So I'm adding a little water. This is a storm color, so it's a darker gray. I think it'll look nice on the silo, and... It'll be a nice, it's the border basically for everything else. Um, now you could easily do two different colors. Like if you wanted to make um, the border around the barn a different color, make the silo a different color, you can totally do that. Um, I'm just going with the colors that my husband suggested. Um, because he and I are gonna see this every day in our hallway. So I wanted it to be a color scheme that he liked to that meant something to him. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. My grandparents' barn was just a metal, uh, metal structure. So they did not have the classic red barn.
but I very much remember um, on the farm milking cows, getting gathering the eggs. I think I've talked about that before. Um, naming the calves. I think that was the highlight um, in the spring. Go to the farm and there'd be new calves and each of us grandkids got a chance to name different calves. All right. That's a pretty nice transfer. It has a really good, good looking barn. Okay, and remember this the backdrop for this is going to be a cream colored wall, so it's going to look um, It's going to look pretty nice It's all going to pop off of there. It's not going to kind of fade away like it is on this gray Backdrop actually let me pull this measuring device out now since I've got my Pieces already on there and now you should be able to see better I wish I'd thought of that earlier all right, now you can see it. So this is a big old heavy window. It still has the sashing in the sides of the windows. The, if you don't know what that is, they're the strings, really cords um, that keep the, the window in in contact with each other, the two pieces of the window. So the thing I love about Chalk Couture is just that really your sky, the sky's the limit and your creativity is the key um, to how everything's gonna look, right? Like you, you get to choose your colors, you get to choose the transfers, so um, you really can create just about anything you want. Um, I was awake, some woke up sometime in the middle of the night and my brain started thinking about what project I was going to do today because I kept wanting to not get this done. <laughs> I've been afraid of putting it on this glass. I don't know. There's just been a lot of things about this project that have kind of spooked me away from it for a while. Um, but, but as I was laying there thinking about different projects, you know, um, I just kept coming up with all kinds of different things that I haven't thought of before. Um, <laughs> definitely the wrong time to be doing that, but um, I need to be sleeping. But uh, to me, I just love the versatility of this product and If you have someone who really enjoys um, crafting, um, you can get together and share your transfers and um, I think that's the best, the best plan. And I've been doing that a little bit um, with a friend and plan to do that some more. All right. So I love how that windmill turned out. I think I like it even better than I like the barn. Um, and I really like the barn. So that is exciting. All right, now probably the more difficult part is turning this over and getting the um, border with my buffalo plaid. So. We will give that a shot. I'm, I'm thinking I will probably do one area um, and let you see how that works. And then I'll probably get off, finish it, and then uh, put some pictures up so you guys can see it. I think it's just gonna take, I'm gonna have to move my transfer four times, one for each corner, 
and I just think that might be a little bit uh, boring to watch. Um, and it may be a little stressful for me. So as you can see, this is definitely an old, old window out of an old house. Um, this is the part that would have been um, unpainted. So paint has rolled down behind the back. And um, I just think it's awesome. Cool character. Okay, so let's get buzzing cloths and... So what I'm thinking is I will fuzz the transfer and then it's basically going to go down in this corner. I'm going to use this piece of wax paper that I cut um, to keep it from going in that same area with my barn. I want to give myself a little bit of a buffer. Um, so that's my plan. Now, Chalk Couture does sell... Um, a masking transfer that's very similar to this but it's not as big as I needed for this so um, while it would work it's not the right size for what I need for this really big project uh, I could have made it smaller but the the um, the window is so large I really wanted it to um, match up and I think the wax paper is going to be fine. I haven't used wax paper on my transfers, but it's got that waxy um, feel, so I think it'll come off just fine. But this is definitely an experiment, not something I've done before. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. So I'm going to have to put this off to the side while I fuzz. So with these really big transfers, what I found is if you do the sticky side up and then you trans or you fuzz kind of the opposite way that you normally would. So put the fuzzing cloth like that. And I'll grab my second fuzzing cloth over here off the floor. Because I only have so much room in here. And I'll just work on fuzzing. I know that my uh, my transfer isn't that fuzzy anymore. I mean, it's not that sticky anymore. It's an older transfer. I've had it for quite a while. I've used it quite a bit. Love that buffalo check um, on everything. It's a really fun transfer. Um, it is still available. There is a, a large buffalo check, and then this is the small buffalo check. The large buffalo check is about twice, the squares are about twice this size. So it is a real large buffalo check. Okay, so that's coming off really nicely. So we'll see how this works. I'm trying to get these two pieces to work together nicely. So I'm wanting to put my piece like that so it's kind of lined up with the back of the truck. And I want to use my natural borders so that it has a natural border and I want to put that up against the corner over here. It's going to take a little bit of negotiating to get it right where I want it. But thankfully it's not super sticky. If it was super sticky, it would be more challenging right now. And now I can see the wax paper, which is nice. I can see it and I can line it up. I'm lining it up right on this line, which is what I was hoping I would be able to do so that I get a nice, um, a nice even uh, line with my buffalo check. I don't think you would notice it. I don't think it really has to be perfect. Um, oh, awesome, Lisa. Well, I will put the link um, for you. I'll put the link for you and you can take a look at it, okay? Um, 
let's see now let me grab the so we wanted to do this in kind of a mustard which I'm totally on board for so I've got this yellow this bumblebee yellow and um, brown I think brown will be a good good color combo let's see so we've got we have these little color trays, so if you're ever going to do mixing, they're real inexpensive and they're perfect for um, for color mixing. All right, so here I have my bumblebee yellow. You want your paste to be like um, yogurt. You don't want it to be like oatmeal, and you don't want it to be like thin soup. You want it, you really want that yogurty consistency. This one's a little bit dry, but it's not too dry. After you've worked with it a little bit, you kind of know what to expect um, from your paste. I'm gonna put quite a bit in here because I'm going to have quite a bit to, to do. I'll start with just a little bit. Make kind of a, I'm thinking of gray Poupon. We'll see if that gray Poupon is the right, right idea. All right, so we have our, our yellow. We've added a little brown. not too bad. I think I'm going to add a little more yellow. It got a little dark on me. So I think I'll add a little more of the yellow. I really just want kind of a tinted yellow, right, for mustard. I was thinking about adding orange, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I want it, I still want that bright yellow. I just want it muddied a little bit. Maybe a little more yellow. That should be enough for my whole project, so that's good. All right. Yeah, it kind of looks like the middle of an egg yolk now. That's been hard boiled. <laughs> That'll be the color I remember. Hard boiled egg yolk. All right, let's give this a try. So we'll put this on and I just want it to be in that area where I'm putting the buffalo plaid. Grab my squeegee. So this is a small squeegee and then there's a mini squeegee. Um, I used the mini squeegee for a long time. Most of my projects were really small. Um, now that I'm doing bigger projects, um, I really like the small squeegee. It's a good size um, for handling a little bit bigger projects. If you're just going to do things like um, tags and smaller scale, the mini squeegee I really recommend, especially if you have smaller hands. Um, however, bigger projects, the small squeegee gets things done a little quicker which is our goal because we don't want that chalk to dry in our transfer. It is a silk screen transfer, so we don't want to have our paste drying because if it dries in the transfer, it's gonna pull that color off. So I think I'll show you a little trick, which is I'm just gonna peel back. I've done this whole side over here, get this top little corner. Pull this back. You can instantly see that awesome buffalo check. Now I've got to make sure that I'm pulling left to right or top to bottom. I don't want to pull at an angle. And you can see where that wax paper's done a great job of making me a nice crisp line, which again, it's not really necessary. Ah, you could do a sunflower for sure. I don't have a small sunflower. I have a really big sunflower, but I could check and see. I've got some 
spring. They're called spring minis. And I could see if there was a, if one of the flowers in there was like a sunflower. I didn't really think about it at the time uh, when I was doing, wasn't thinking about sunflowers early in the spring. Looks like I need a little bit more of my chalk. The chalk goes a long ways. Um, the containers um, have three ounces, but as you can see, as I'm scraping this off, um, I put on a lot, but I take off a lot. So that's how much is on my um, squeegee right now. And I've got a little bit of a brown chunk right there. Um, my, my stir stick had some brown when I was laying it down. Um, if I don't like that, I'll just go back and put some yellow over the top. Okay, so now I'm just taking off all the excess. I don't want to leave that on thick. Um, Otherwise, it, it looks like it has a texture, and that doesn't really look that nice. All right, so now I'll pull up the rest of this, pulling straight across. Ah, I love it. All right, and you can see my wax paper did a great job at sticking to it. I'll pull that off and we'll see how that comes off. See if that was a good solution or not. Uh, it's peeling right off. So wax paper is a great um, buffer if you want to keep your um, project from, if you want to like mask an area. Like I say, they do sell a really cool, they have some masks. They have a square and a circle, uh, two different and a rectangle. So um, that's a great way to trying to find a place to put down this big buffalo plaid um, transfer. Hang on, let me set it down over here. So. That transfer is way too big to put into a bath of water. Um, so I'm hanging it off the edge of my work surface. Great, Lisa, I'm glad you love it. I love it too. So I am going to, after I get off, I will work on finishing these um, other three corners and I will share a picture of this um, on my page. Uh, I will link these different transfers for you. Uh, Lisa, especially the buffalo plaid, I'll put that on for you. Um, but yeah, uh, Chalk Couture is awesome. So much fun. Um, next Saturday, we have our uh, Board and Pillar Club. If you've been wanting to try Chalk Couture, um, it's a great way to check out the products. Um, the way Board and Pillar Club works is um, the folks who have want who want to try it get to vote on the transfer that they want to choose. Um, this time we have two different transfers. Um, we had two, we only had two votes and it was a tie. So instead of having them uh, choose a transfer they didn't like, I had them each just get their own transfer. Um, and so you need the Board and Pillar, which is our surface. The voting's already happened, um, so and friends have already ordered their things. So you need a, the board and pillar, you need the transfer, and you can find that on the VIP group. Um, you also need some chalk and some kind of tool, a squeegee, or you could even use a credit card. Um, I've heard people use those in a pinch. Uh, just some, a rigid plastic something uh, would work. Um, and then on sab next Saturday, we get together and we um, do the project together. So I will get the transfers that they have and I will make that project. That'll be my Saturday project next week. And then if they have any questions while they're doing it, 
we can um, talk about it. I can talk them through if their paste is dry or whatever the issue might be. And then they share their finished product on the in the VIP group. And um, it's just a way for us to connect and for you to try the product and then have somebody there to walk you through any challenges you might have. Um, if you've done any crafting though, this is really pretty straightforward. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to see how things work, but it's a really fun, um, fun product and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm hooked. I'll be doing this forever probably. Um, anyway, thank you so much for dropping in today. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, drop a question in the line down below and I will answer your questions. Um, I've got some chalk to clean up and uh, some transfers to clean up, but I'm going to finish these edges first and get you guys a picture. Um, get out there and make it a great day, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.